Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here at Motorcycle Park in the mighty Minitropolis of Marnie, Iowa. Check out what I got behind me right here. I've been waiting to do this review for quite some time. This is the brand new Royal Enfield Himalayan 452. How's that for a machine, huh? I uh, picked this up Friday. We put about, uh, about 1,500 miles on it already, so I guess this is the 1,500 mile review. It's really quite a motorcycle, and I've got a lot to say about it. I'll start with, I've been waiting for this bike all my life. How's that? <laughs> Gleaming endorsement, right? So I am a fanboy. So uh, what is it? Well, it's a ADV. It's liquid cool. It's got about 40 horsepower. It's got a great suspension. Uh, I call it a traveling bike. We've been calling it a traveling bike. And uh, I'm trying to differentiate it from the big heavy ADVs. This is not a big heavy ADV. This is a lighter ADV that will still go It'll go over 100 miles an hour. It will uh, cruise long distances. We just uh, took it across the state of Nebraska. We did 440 miles in uh, six or seven hours. Let's say seven hours. And uh, without any problems, the thing just very comfortable to ride on. You know, it, it's got all the right things. So let's talk about the, the specs right quick. Starting with the engine, it's a really nifty single cylinder, liquid cooled, dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder engine. There's a radiator right there. It's got a six-speed transmission, an absolutely smooth six-speed transmission versus the old Himalayan, which was kind of trackerish. This engine puts out uh, 40 horsepower and about 30 foot-pounds of torque. That's about 40 newton meters. The power band is very smooth. The torque band is uh, incredibly flat. And uh, it's I think it's the first bike by RE Royal Enfield with a fly-by-wire throttle, and that's important because I got something to say about that. Now, as amazing as that engine is, and it is amazing, something they really caught me off guard, and we knew they were doing it, but, but it really has been an amazing thing, is the geometry of the motorcycle and the suspension, the suspension and how it works so well. So, you know, you look at the front, and it seems very similar to the old thing. And by the way, that's another theme of this bike has, familiarity. I, I own a 411 with over 31,000. A Royal Enfield 411 with over 31,000 miles on it. This bike is familiar to me, even though I only have 1,500 miles on it. So looking at the front, it's got the same front tire as the uh, 411. It's got the 90-90-21. It's got the, about 8 inches of travel suspension, about 200 millimeters. Only this has a Showa upside down fork. There it is. Protected. Very good protection. Look at all that dirt. We, we uh, picked these up in Utah, went to Wyoming, um, Colorado. Back into Wyoming, back into Colorado, back into Wyoming, back into Colorado, through Nebraska and uh, back here to Iowa now. So we we had a lot of fun, and I have not been able to wash it yet. And anyway, it's got a 320 millimeter front disc with a dual piston bribery caliper. That's a larger disc than before. The brakes are superb on this thing. If this one is a tube tire, there is a tubeless tire option coming. Jumping back here to the rear, we still have a monoshock, but now the shock lays flatter like this. The link is right through here. It's still linked. There's no link hanging down below like there was before. And we have more ground clearance. Now we have about nine inches or about 230, 235 millimeters of ground clearance. So, and by the way, that is a Showa monoshock. The suspension components are very important. We'll talk about that more here in a bit. Rear disc is a 270 millimeter with a single Vibri caliper and it's a very powerful disc. I think you could, uh, you know, well, in the dirt, you always use your back brake. And, uh, you know, you can go old school on this and just use the heck out of your back brake. ABS front and rear. You can turn off the rear ABS if you want to. Tire on the back is a 140 80 17. So still a 17, but it's a larger, much larger tire. So these are the new Seat tires that come with the bike. They were made just for this motorcycle. What do I think of them? Well, I think a lot of them. I think I want to, uh, I will say we took them, we took these bikes on, uh, Big rock roads. We took them on uh, gravel. We took them on uh, mud, not mud, mud, but you know, wet roads. We took them uh, across uh, open fields. We did all kinds of terrain, you know, uh, dirt roads, all that neat stuff. And the tires performed flawlessly. I don't know if I would take this tire on sand. And it doesn't have any scooping power, or on real mud. You know, if it was, if you're going to go into uh, six inches of mud, you might not, you might want a different tire. The other thing I thought about was pea gravel might be a problem. But in the vast majority of cases, this is a really good tire. What I want to know is how is it going to hold up? You know, um, is it going to be a 5,000 mile tire or a 10,000 mile tire? Or you know, if it's a 10,000 mile tire, 
I will put those tires on again. So I've got 16,000 on, 1,600 on this bike already. So we will find out how that goes. Uh, back to the suspension. You know, we rode this on all kinds of terrain. We did everything from rock covered fields with grass to uh, interstate highway. And this, this thing performed flawlessly, it was very comfortable. I don't think I got kidney punched by this bike one time. It, it was just that good. Fuel tank holds four and a half gallons. That's about 17 liters, I believe. And we were getting, through the normal riding, we were getting about in the high 60, 66, 67 miles a gallon. And then when we were cutting across the strait of Nebraska, you know, high speeds, we were getting about 55 miles a gallon. So quite a bit of range, you know, two, we did 200 miles going across Nebraska. We did 199 miles, I think, on one tank. Seat height is, in, it, it's a two position seat. So the seat height in the low position is 32 and a half inches. That's 825 millimeters. And in the high position, it's, uh, I think it's 33 inches. And that's about uh, 845 millimeters. But get yourself over here and sit on one. Get yourself over to Baxter Cycle and sit on one of these things. Oh. The other thing to think about with this motorcycle is it's got an incredibly low center of gravity. The, uh, and I'm gonna get some argument from people about this, I already have some pushback. The center of gravity is so low, that makes a bike easier to handle when it's, you know, short-legged person. So to back up that statement, I've got this to say. I have a 411 Himalayan that's got over 30, over 31,000 miles on it. I drove it a thousand miles last week, you know, days before I picked this one up. I've driven this one 1,500 miles. I think I can give you a pretty good comparison. Now, if the center of gravity for some magical reason is not the same or lower than this one, then Royal Enfield has done some sort of voodoo to make the bike handle like it is. It's a very easy bike to be on. It's a very manageable motorcycle. It's, it's a great machine. Next would be the wheelbase. It's 59.4 inches or about 1,510 millimeters. So it's quite a wheelbase, but yeah, when we were out there climbing up the mountain roads with big rocks on it, it was very manageable, you know, or when we were on the, on the dirt or the gravel, it was very manageable. You know, this light, this is a lighter front end now, and it just works very, very well. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, something else to look at. These are my Noru gloves right here. You know, it's got a gray top seat. This particular model, this is called the Himalayan Salt. It's got the red, it's gray with the red. It's got a gray top seat, you know. It's got this nifty luggage rack. It's got integrated taillights. So the brake lights, the taillights, and the blinkers are all within this. And it's all LED, front and rear. The headlight is LED as well that very bug covered headlight and very bright by the way. We left Nebraska, Alliance Nebraska at 4 a.m. and uh, we drove in the dark, the darkest parts of Nebraska <laughs> for a couple hours and beautiful, we could see just fine. Amazing how much light the headlight put out, you know. Uh, if I owned this and was gonna do a lot of night riding, I would put some auxiliary lights on it just to get, you know, width outwards, you know. Jumping up here, we've got this tall windshield. The standard windshield is about here. I got the tall one on this motorcycle. And here we've got switch gear that is, it's higher quality than before by far, but it's very utilitarian. It's a flash to pass, low beam, high beam, home button over here, blinkers. And this is something very important. The blinkers are very smooth operating. That's something that always bugs me about motorcycles. You get a brand new, really neat motorcycle and the blinkers are kind of, you know, clunky. And this one is not like that. Horn down here and then the joystick to control this thing here. We'll look at that in a minute. Kill switch, run switch. Start switch, hazard lights over here. Over here's a mode button, and that's really neat too. Down, Down here's something I wanna show you. This is a USB-C power outlet. So you can plug your gear into that. Show a forks right there. Now I wanna show you this. This is a, an improvement over the old Oculus. This is a total TFT system. It's gonna look wavy because the camera's gonna show that. But check that out. Over here, we've got the uh, tachometer on the top. It's an 8,000 RPM red line. Gear indicator in the center miles per hour, yeah. always on clock. Temperature, ambient temperature, outside air. Down here is the odometer, and then the, uh, oh, I'm almost out of gas. The trip meters and stuff, we gotta hit that right there. So trip A right there, trip B, I guess it's trip one, trip two. Fuel range, I've got 13 miles of range left. Fuel consumption, volt meter right there. Service due, engine temperature, and that's it. It has uh, performance modes and eco modes. Now the performance modes have performance mode regular with uh, ABS on, performance mode regular with ABS off on the rear tire. It also has eco mode on and eco mode off with ABS off on the rear tire. Now, uh, this also will turn dark at night. I've got it set on auto, so when it gets dark, this turns black. 
with the white lining, very easy to see, very, uh, you know, very nice. I like it a lot. That is a vast improvement over the shaky, clunky old one that we had before. <laughs> uh, something I want to show you all here, because I, I know everybody's going to want to know about it. See that big old kickstand? That's a great kickstand, isn't it? This bike leans a lot. I don't know if I can show that here. Uh, the first couple times I put that on the side stand, and actually even this morning, I rode this around quite a bit already today, the side stand is so far over when you put the bike down, you feel like you're going to drop it, you know. But uh, I think why they did that, and this is my guess, is they wanted the bike to be easy to get on. So you approach it, you know, I've got a 30-inch inseam and I just threw my leg over that. No, no troubles at all, you know. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling that's why they did it. Uh, there are bags that are made for the sides here. There's all kinds of tie-ins to hook them on. I haven't seen the Royal Enfield ones yet. I've seen some spy photo ones, but I don't know what the uh, big ones are going to look like. There is uh, hard cases that you can get for here on the back. There's a hard case for the top that will fit a full face helmet. You stick your key in down here. You get the seat off. There are your toolkits back here. You know, I, I said earlier this had a very low center of gravity. We put this on its side. I'll put the video up here in the corner. And uh, a friend of mine... You know, we're all in our 60s. He picked it up, then he laid it back down again, and he picked it up again. And, uh, you know, that, that means, you know, again, very low center of gravity. What else can I show you before we take this little hot rod for a ride? Skid plate on the bottom. This one's metal. This one's plastic. Uh, when it's on the center stand, you can actually turn the front tire. You can pull it. It's, it drags on the cement, but you can, you know, to get your valve stem to where you want it or whatever you want to do. The... Uh, we adjusted the shift lever the other day, very easy to do. So if you ride without boots, you can have it like this. You wanna put your big old boots on, just pull that bolt out, click this up one notch, put it back together. Now the shifter's higher. Very simple, very easy to do, you know. I think it's time for me to gear up and us to go for a ride. How's that sound? It's very similar, but yet it's entirely different to the old Himalayan, and I don't know how to quantify that. When uh, I rode my Himalayan, my old Himalayan, yesterday quite a bit, about 50 miles, I could feel the similarities, you know, how your arms sit, how you sit on the bike itself, uh, how the bike handles, you know, the, the point on the bike that you sit on, you know. Now, something we were kind of having trouble with in the beginning was getting it going from a dead stop. And we were trying all different kinds of things. We decided you had to give it quite a bit of gas to go. Now, we figured out just this morning, watch the tack needle. I'm going to just let the clutch out. It gives itself gas. So what we were doing was hindering the process. So I'll do that again. I'm going to let the clutch out. I got nothing on the gas. I'm going to let the clutch out. See how it gives itself gas? The tack needle goes up. So we were hindering the process actually by trying to ride it like a normal motorcycle. You know, this is a fly-by-wire bike. And that's the... Uh, the new ways, I guess. Old dogs have to learn a new trick, right? Suspension is fabulous on this thing. It's not adjustable, I think, except for uh, the rear spring on the back. What do they call that? Preload? But yet, it's just been a terrific thing to ride with. You know? Welcome to the mighty Minitropolis of Marnie, Iowa, home of Baxter Cycle, seller of new and used Royal Enfields, Triumphs, and classic British bikes of all type. You need parts, accessories, thingamajigs, doodads, stuff like that at all? Get yourself over here. Check it out, check it out, does it so well. I like it, I like it a lot. Wahoo! Very good pickup, loads of torque. It's, it's just a dream. I've been waiting for this bike all my life, I really have. You know, the one bike, the sum I call it, the single universal motorcycle, you know, the sum, the single unified motorcycle, whatever you want to call it. The one bike that can do everything, you know? If you only have one bike in your garage and there's no reason to do that, this would be the one to have. There's no reason to just own one bike. But check this out. So 59.4 inch wheelbase, 1,510 uh, millimeters. Just turns like a dream, you know? And it's so familiar feeling. It's so much like the old one in that sense. You know, it's very controllable. What it has that the old one did never had is power and better handling and good brakes. You know, they just improved every place that it needed it. <laughs> I think we found red line. <laughs> oh, squirrel! <laughs> we missed it. Did you guys see that? <laughs> What a grin, what a grin. 
Hey, we got a crowd over here. <laughs> Let's leave those guys in the dust by gully. Welcome to South Marnie. Welcome to South Marnie. But the handling is superb. I mean, the handling is just fabulous, you know? And uh, I, I just love it. I just love it. And it, you know, it does town. I, I cannot believe the wheelbase is 1,510 millimeters because it just does not act like that. I don't know what they've done. I, I think, you know, it, has, it goes back to that incredibly low center of gravity that comes with the bike. I love the stock pipe too. We were talking about options that are out there. Baxter Cycle has a AEW pipe, just a beautiful thing from the head all the way to the uh, tailpipe and uh, I, I would like to have something like that but I don't want to get it right away that was the famous bridge test incredibly good shifting you just touch the shifter and it goes you know let's see what we can do here I call this the hill spin test how's that huh Next time you all are in the mighty mini-tropolis of Marnie, Iowa, make sure you get yourself over here, right there, to the derail grill and grab yourself a Wahoo Burger. <laughs> Wahoo! <laughs> we better simmer down a little bit. Simmer down, simmer down. So seating position. You sit, your knees seem like they're lower than your hips. Your heels are behind your knees quite a bit, and your feet are up quite a bit too. Legroom is a little tight, I think. You lean forward, you do reach to the bars a little bit, but I like the way the bars are. And what I like about the bars is when you stand up, you're over the bars, you got a lot of weight over the uh, front tire, which is what you want. You know, you're out in the uh, sticks and rocks and dirt and whatever. Works very well like that. I also think that uh, for long rides, it's very comfortable, very comfortable seating position. And I think the seat, that's another thing I forgot to mention in the earlier talk. I have a, on my 411 Himalayan, I put a seat concept seat on there. Very comfortable. This seat is very similar to that seat. You know, very similar indeed. <laughs> oh, I'm going to rile the locals, upset the, upset the natives. They're going to come after me with torches and pitchforks. and <laughs> We better simmer down, right? Simmer down. It's a fun bike. It, it's just a fun bike. It's a friendly bike. It's a forgiving bike. It just seems to do everything really well. It's a comfortable bike. I was going on about the seat, wasn't I? Yeah, we rode this uh, 1,250 miles in 49 hours, and it was it was just we never once felt you know we got back from Nebraska, 440 mile ride, 450 mile ride, something like that, and we got back at noon. We could have gone out that afternoon, you know. Let's take a look in the looking glass here. So. I have a 30 inch inseam, I cannot flat foot it, not even close, but I do feel comfortable on it. Check out that front end. Yes, it has a double fender, everybody's going to ask about that. It's because of style, that's my theory anyway. The tall windshield, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hey, look at that back end, boy that is a, I, I like this bike, you got to see one in real life, you just got to see one in real life. It's a wonderful bike. It's a wonderful bike. Let's head out on the highway for a minute. <laughs> a place I'm very familiar with with this motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a lot of fun on this. Some of the things we did with it, uh, we uh, we went in to get a uh, subway rain while we were in there in some city and I don't know where we were, let's say Colorado or, or uh, Wyoming. And uh, streets were just slick as thought, no problem, you know. Later we were in Laramie? Yeah, Laramie, Wyoming. And uh, we had to get on the interstate as part of our course. Right, we rode all the way to Cheyenne on interstate. So that's, I can't remember, 45, 50 miles. Traffic was going 90-ish and the bikes did absolutely fine. No trouble at all. That's another main difference between this one and the old one is this one has plenty of power to go. Look at that pickup. I like it. I like it. Oh, the mirrors. Let's talk about those. So the mirrors are far enough outwards that my shoulders are just barely visible in the corners. 
Uh, they don't vibrate most of the time. They vibrate when you're giving it a lot of a lot of juice, but that's about it. And they, you know, they're very, they hold their place good. I'd say the mirrors are very good on these as they are. Listen to that. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a great bike. How about faults? Let's talk about negativities. See right there? That's where the trip meter is supposed to be. Now I can turn that on by just touching that joy switch and there it is. When I shut the bike off, when I turn it back on, that will be gone again. It'll be blank. And I wish that would stay, you know, that, that would be nice. Um, other things I would say, well, I don't have anything yet, but I'll come up with something. Just uh, check the next video or two and we'll, we'll find something. It's been a, it's just been a grand bike. I really appreciate it. And I really have enjoyed riding it. There's another one just like it. How about that? Huh? Hey, maybe we can get them to race, huh? <laughs> we'll skip that. How's that sound? Uh, it's just been a hoot. It's just been a real hoot, you know? Now, if y'all are interested in a motorcycle like this, a new used Royal Enfield Triumph, classic British bike of any type, need parts, accessories, thingamajigs, doobads, coats, jackets, boots, hats, heavens, socks and underwear. Get yourself over here to Baxter Cycle in the mighty mini tropolis of Marnie, Iowa, or go to BaxterCycle.com. Tell those fine folks that Fuzzy Biker, that's me, sent ya. Look how well this does all this. No trouble at all, by golly. They can help you out. <laughs> now, I'm gonna put this up for a minute or two, and then I'm gonna hop back on it and go for a long ride, a couple hundred miles today. Life is good, my friends. Life is good. Get out there and ride. Wahoo! Yippee-yay-yay! Yippee-yay-yo! Down the road we go! Beautiful, beautiful machine.